and we're live. Hello and welcome to Soiree Lifestyle Series 2020. Thank you for joining us today. Please say hello to us in the comments section and let us know that you are here. Also, please use our, our comment section for questions or comments about the show or questions for our guest speaker today. The purpose of our group is to share valuable information in featured weekly segments with professionals in the respective fields around lifestyles, relationships, and entertaining. I am Rosemary Skinner. I am a professional event and wedding planner and a designer and the owner of Soiree Event Extraordinaire. My hosts are Crystal Cotto Sullivan. She is a coach and connector. John Sullivan, he is a counselor. And Cynthia Ballard is the owner of CB Marketing, a marketing specialist and a Reiki master. Our guest speaker today is Floyd Lou Kerr, the owner of Floyd, Floyd Joy Studios. She's an artist and she's going to enlighten us today with about art, her beautiful artwork, and also how we can use art in our day-to-day -day lives. So before we go on to, um, on to Floyd Lou, we just do have a couple announcements for, for you. Um, we um, love doing this show and we always look to see how we can improve it. So what we've noticed right now that there is a change in um, a lot of people have gone back to work and we do have a lot of uh, viewers in the evening. So we're going to change up our format a little bit. We are not going to give up our, our Wednesday lives at one, but we're going to add a Thursday evening live at, um, at 8 p.m. Now, we are going to alternate shows between uh, doing a live on the Thursday evening with a, um, a watch party on the Wednesday. And if it's a live show on the Wednesday, it'll be a watch party on the Thursday. Sounds a little bit confusing, but we'll have it all spelled out and we'll remind you as we go along. So I just wanted to give you a little heads up on that. So uh, without further ado, I want to turn it over to, to Floydie Lou. We're so excited to have her. She's actually going to be doing live art during the shows. So over to you, Floydie. Thanks for joining us. We're so excited to have you on. Thanks. Am I here? <laughs> You're on, yes. I'm on. I don't know. Um, thank you so much, Rosemary. This is kind of fun because it kind of made me step into, I'm going to do some painting for myself. You know, I tend to do um, a lot of art workshops and I'm always doing quick demos for other people and I, I never get to, you know, get in the studio on my own. Speaking of, I'm by myself in the studio. I'm going to take this mask off. I'm going to shut my door. Hold on. Okay, so are you there? So I can take this off and breathe while I do this because it's all about... Oh, breathing, right? So when we step up. So it's nice to meet everybody. Thanks for coming on. I'm going to create this into some beautiful flowers. And part of what I do is to really show people that there is an inner artist in every single one of us. And sometimes just getting creative, especially during these times, um, is just really uplifting. And um, I think, what do you think? Do you think that you'd be able to create this so far? I think a lot of you probably could. So I'm gonna start right away. And this is my, my process. This is how I paint. Um, there's a term called paridiolia. I probably have incorrectly said the word and that's one thing you're gonna learn about me. Imperfection is perfection for me. So even if I messed up the word, it's about taking the action and doing something and not worrying. But if you look at that word, that word means, and I looked it up because I thought, what is it that I'm doing that um, is allowing me to see shapes? And paradiolia is talking about, you know, when you look in the clouds at night or in the daytime, excuse me, and you'll see shapes and you might see the, you know, the man in the moon type of thing. So that's how I start. So I create this wonderful mess. This is where the music is on and I can just take paint. I don't have to worry about being perfect. I just get it flowing. And um, from there is, we're gonna paint a vase of flowers. Do you see a vase of flowers? I do. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. And then um, as I paint along, I think um, our other hosts here will be asking me questions. But anyway, I'm here in Windsor, Ontario right now. I live part-time in Mexico. Um, I have art workshops in Mexico as, as well as here in Windsor, Ontario. Uh, I will be leaving at the end of, well, probably the beginning of December. So I do have a few more workshops available. 
And I really, really love to paint live that you'll see today. So if you have a live event, um, maybe an upcoming wedding, actually speak to Rosemary about that because we have a really cool thing happening about that with a soiree event extraordinary. I work exclusively with her on that. So it's a really fun thing for any brides or special events that you might have coming up. Let me get started. You don't want to hear me talk. You want to see some fun flowers come out of here. So Floydie, while you're painting, we'll just we'll kind of just uh, talk a little bit. I I've taken the paint classes from you, and I had it. I always admired people who could paint or do art. It was not something I've ever done. Never even attempted because I didn't feel like creatively my mind works very well. But to put paint and a brush to a canvas. But I took two of your classes, and I was amazed at what turned out. Two beautiful paintings. But I mean, of course, you did help me with them. <laughs> That's probably why they turned out so good. But um, it, it was, you know, it was so nice about it. It was so relaxing. You just kind of got right into the painting. And it was amazing to me how it transformed, which I know we're going to see this transform. And I remember you kept saying, it doesn't matter if you mess it up. It's not a mess up. It can, everything could be changed. And so it was really interesting. Um, okay, so let me... So you're going to start. So, and then I'm just going to address for a minute. Um, just I'm going to address about the event. So one of the cool things about uh, doing art and stuff, having live art at your event. Uh, I know Floaty Lou has a lot of experience in doing that. So what what is live art at an event? It's where you have an artist on site. So a couple things that can happen. Either the 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 artist is going to capture. The, the event, the people at the event and highlights of that event. And at the end of the evening, if it is like a fundraising event, that particular art piece can be, can be auctioned off. Or if it's a wedding, that is a keepsake for the bride and groom to have in their home. Or um, I know Floaty Lou also does where guests can actually participate in the art piece where instead of signing a um, a book, like signing a guest book or, uh, you know, a photo of the bride group is you'd actually approach, uh, the artist would have you approach the canvas and do something on the canvas. And then she would take all of everybody's uh, what markings that they've done and actually turn it into an art piece. And oh my God, that's coming live already. I'm just going to go over to um, to our host and my other hosts, if you have anything. You Crystal, I know you take, you've taken art classes. <laughs> I have Rosemary. Could you put it on on uh, gallery so people can see Floydy Lou actually working? Oh, it is. Oh. I can see it on no, that. it's not. I you can mean, see doing her. this. Nothing. <laughs> no, yeah. You can't see it. It is on gallery. It is. Uh, you had it, it. That means it's on on speaker. So you've been on. Sorry. We have. Sorry, Floydy Lou. I've been <laughs> wanting to see. <laughs> I want people to see what you're doing. So what do we not see? We're not seeing it. No. How come I can see it? Sorry, guys, we're having technical issues again. I think it's the Facebook thing again. Hold no, on. you're. You, did, what does it say at the top? It says gallery view. That means it's on speaker view. There. Can you see it now? Wait till it comes up on Facebook. Okay, sorry, guys, technical issues again. There. Now there. we can. Now she's on. Everyone's on now. Oh, I'm sorry, it, but I had it on her so we could focus on her. It wasn't on her. Sorry. Sorry, guys, I'm only hitting the buttons of what it says on top. No problem. And I'm wondering if this, will this help if I move this in closer? Is that, is that better for everybody? That's great. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just, um, I had all of my mess and I'm looking at some shapes and I'm trying to see what I can find in the sense of florals, some movement. I love to work quickly. Everything that I tend to do, I don't know. Is this, yeah, I think that's high enough. You can see that, can you? Or yeah, should I raise? So. yeah, okay, perfect. And then one of the things I really want to uh, recommend for people, this is one of my favorite brushes. I actually have two and Everybody knows art uh, supplies can be very expensive and intimidating when you go in, you don't know what to buy. This is your typical from the hardware store chip brush. 
And then another one that's a little bit bigger. That's what I've worked with so far on this piece is just this, which are a dollar. So yes, I have some beautiful expensive brushes, but I can do this entire painting. These are my two, two of my favorites that I use. And then I might go into something like this. So just know that you can use all these around your house. At some point, hold on one second, I'll be using these sponges. We've all seen those at our local stores, hardware stores, Dollarama sort of thing. And then I just grabbed this from my kitchen, right? Little pie server. So these are things you can use. Use your forks, use your plastic forks, reuse them. They come in really handy. So you'll see me working with tools like that all the time. I'll continue on here. Um, so yeah, so basically I just created my table in my background wall area. So now I'm gonna kind of work on my vase before I go into my floral. Actually, no, I'm lying. I'm gonna go into some floral so I can let my paint dry, come back down here and finish it up up here. Um, And because I can't see any questions, if anybody has any questions that might be watching, feel free to ask in the chat. And if I'm not able to answer it right now, um, I can do that later, as well as any of our um, hosts here today would be able to help you with that. So I'm just getting some shadow in there for me. How many of you think you could just do that? Some squiggles all over. I think anybody can do that. What, what's, no, the blue, no. what's the blue at the bottom? What's that? What's the blue at the that's, bottom? That's supposed to be my shadow. That's supposed to be my shadow, which will hopefully show up in a second when I, let's fill in. What color should I do? I've got some purple. Let's do a little bit of a toned down yellow. This isn't toned down, but it will be. Hold on. So you'll see when I'm painting at first, I'm not, I'm not doing it slow. Now, if you're looking for something relaxing, maybe you're like the folks here, Cynthia, Cynthia that does Reiki, you no? Know? Yes. Relax. Did I get the, yeah, Crystal, I, I get the two, uh, the two of you mixed up in my head. You know, <laughs> maybe you're the type of person who just wants to kind of go in and take your time. You're at the kitchen counter and you're doing it, um, sometimes I probably need to do that, but I don't because I don't want to think too much. I, want, I don't want us to get into our head. I want us to get into our, um, just our hearts, our feelings. And, you know, so I'm just kind of going over top with this right now. This is just my first step. This is what we call blocking it in. I'm not worried about any perfection at all on this at the moment. I just want to see if my flowers will come through. Um, this is way too dark for what's happening here, but I'm not worried about it at the moment. I can come back to it. I don't want to overwork it. See, now I'm, now I'm starting to critique myself. How many of you critique yourself and you say that maybe you're not good enough or that this is this and this is that? Don't. So I'm just going to fix my little whoopsie. I'm going to channel my inner Bob Ross. And uh, he tells me that happy little accidents are an okay thing. So I'm going to agree with him. He seems to know what he was doing. I'm new to painting. I've been painting for five years. Just lighten up that. I'm going here for a sec. Just lighten that up. Now I'm going to go into some flowers. This is just me. Okay. Got you in the painting if you just started five years ago. Um, my husband is an artist. He's a beautiful, um, beautiful artist. He's been, you know, painting for over thirty years. He is a person who has studied and in the books every day. Um, he has his artwork at various galleries in Mexico um, and also sells online. And what happened is um, we were in Mexico doing the workshops and he was doing the teaching. But what we realized very quickly is that the people who came to want to paint, 
some people that were, you know, on vacation. And um, this is where I'm seeing shapes and I'm, I kind of see what I think looks like a flower. So I'm adding that in. And when they took their workshops, they didn't really want to do that heavy studying. They really wanted to relax and just enjoy their process and learn a little bit. And um, for them, uh, you know, they just, when you work for 40 years raising your family, uh, the last thing you necessarily want to do is to go into some heavy duty training again. So what happened is I stepped in and I went in to say, you know what, folks? We can just, I, oops, that's not a color I wanted, but see, look, those whoops are good. I did a whoops, I'm just gonna flip around. Those look like pretty flowers. Um, so um, it was just my way to say, okay, let's create something where people can just let loose, be free, no judgment, and bring that inner artist out in them that they once wanted to do. How many of you have went to university to get that, that career <laughs> and uh, you knew you had to pay the mortgage, raise your children and everything. And you didn't want to be an artist because you were told there was no money in art. So you went the one way with the career choice and you let that inner artist kind of lay to the side. And really that's all you really wanted to do. Those are the people who want it, who step into my workshops. I tend to have very uh, talented, talented artists who um, just want to loosen up, want to break those, all those tight rules that they have. And then I have the other, which they're absolute beginners and they're terrified. They think that they're going to be judged on something being good or bad. And that's where my strength comes in is to say, look, I just, I'm going to create a mess. I'm going to do it live on Facebook. <laughs> and, um, if it's a mess, it's a mess. Nobody's going to get hurt here. Nobody's going to die. And, um, that's the, that's the key part. So hopefully you're starting to see something come of this. Yeah, it's looking better already. Yes, I hope. Now, I probably need to get, you know, some stuff that's lighter, as they always say to me, but I'm just going to kind of come in here, do a little flower. I do have some method to my madness. It does look like I, I have a little bit, um, but that's it. So I was able to take that mess, and as you see, um, I have not really drawn out any flowers, have I? This not is what I've done. That's amazing. No, not at all. So this is probably my easiest trick to show you how to do a flower. I will, um, I just did one here. So basically, I saw a patch of color, and I've just kind of gone down, almost like a, a U. And I've just let that sit there and I've done it here. I'll, I just kind of, I'm going to just light this up in here. I went down. So my flower could be facing down. Um, I'm going to get rid of this brown mark that's hitting in me here. And again, this is my first pass through. It'll be enough to show you on this um, show here, but I'll probably go in and just tweak it a little bit. And there it is. But sometimes I'm actually better when I don't do that. I just want to lighten that shadow a bit. It's a little too harsh. See, John gave me a, a really good, good cue there when he and he didn't realize it. When he asked me what that was, that told me I didn't have something going on that was good, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> and that was a that was a good thing. I'm gonna ask him. He didn't know he helped me out there. John, I know you worked with um couples and relationships have you they, do you ever have them do activities not like, like this? this not like this but there, there is there is a uh, uh art therapy for sure i i don't use it myself but that's uh something that's I, out there but yeah. I, I like your initially you said that you had a mess up there which sometimes relationships are and then they can make something beautiful out of it which is <laughs> they hopefully what have. i try to do yeah so or john i think this would be your kind of art What's that? I think this would be your kind of art. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Isn't this more, it's way more fun than all those, I, I, I say this um, with admiration, those uptight people. You know, we have some incredible artists here in Windsor and there's some really amazing artists, but boy, they would probably, I know, I know they would take a long time to, to well, they practiced and, oh, 
oops, that's not bad. I mean, I didn't want to do that, but see, just kind of doing that. And that might not be the right spot, but that's, you know, we'll find out. Go ahead with a question. Yeah, the, or, trans uh, the transformation is absolutely gorgeous, right? So, you know, I find people who maybe have a lot of quiet in their life, um, who need to express themselves and be busy. This is a, you know, a great thing for people to do or those who have a lot of busy and they may use, you know, art to express themselves to, to bring the quiet, right? So, so this piece of art can, 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 can do both. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, well, thank you. And you know, you're right because I, you're seeing me quick because obviously I want this finished in the next, you know, two or three minutes or something that at least looks like it can become the completion. I am kind of that crazy person that's always gone to go. You made a really good point there. However, when I am by myself and there's nobody watching, there are times where I can just, you know, um, create uh, something in here and just really take my time. And sometimes I'll walk away, I'll walk away from it and sit down in my studio and um, like right now, for me, I need to really step back and see what's happening. I don't really know what's happening. So this might be really bad and I don't know yet, but I, I'm kind of loving it. See, I love what I do. Um, so even when it's not the perfection, I just think that it, it's just for me, um, uh, fun. Like it, I love it. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't. Well, you you said yes you said yesterday that you take uh, other paintings and then recreate on them. I can see what that that might be what I'd have to do, Crystal. <laughs> it takes up else. And, but but you already see, you already saw flowers in that mess that you saw. Where uh, I did, I, I saw flowers in there. Now it's my go-to. I am known as a flower artist, right? But um, all I've done is I like. You haven't, you don't see a leaf in there. I've not drawn a leaf, but this green kind of, you know, makes you think, oh, there's a leaf there. So this painting here, well, this isn't, I've kind of started it. I don't know if you can see it. But we can this is a, a neighbor who was about to throw it out. The blue that you see on this was not there. This is not even close to being completed. I will take this same concept, but I'm gonna put it this way, so I can lean it. All this painting was, was this in here. There was um, three of these globes happening, whatever they are, moon, there was three moons. I don't know. So they were gonna throw it out in the garbage. And I'm like, well, this is a perfect canvas. I need to save some money. <laughs> 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 so I took it and said, I'm gonna recreate this and you're not gonna recognize it. So all I've done right now is I've taken out some of the moons, or I'm going to call them moons, there's three of them, one, two, three. I've covered over top. The color I've chosen makes no sense to what I have in the background, and I'm okay with that. It was leftover paint that I had on my, my uh, palette, so I thought I just want to save that paint, put something on, and as I did it, I'm like, okay, this could be a moon. It wasn't really a moon, at, and now I'm going to make some sort of nighttime seascape from it. So it's a really great way for people to bring in their old canvas, maybe they want to perk it up, they want to do it themselves, or they would like to have me create, you know, this old painting that's just sitting in their home that really doesn't have maybe sentimental value. If it does, I have to really treat it with respect. If, you know, if it's grandma's painting, we don't want to go too crazy, <laughs> respect that. But if there's just something you picked up at some garage sale or some old auction you went to to support a local charity, I can come in and take that painting and use what you saw in that mess and create something like this. So it's a really nice way to recycle. I love doing it. So um, what, kind, what kind of paints are you using there? I, I am using a combination, good question. I'm using a combination. See, I start, I don't, I, I can't stop. Okay, but I am gonna stop right now. We're gonna leave it like that just to give you an idea. I'm using a combination of uh, Liquitex in Amsterdam. I shop at Beeknik, which is a local um, art supply. I do go to Michael's and I also go to um, places like Dollarama or like uh, craft stores. So I, I have inexpensive paints here, but then I also have 
um, you know, your uh, regular acrylic paint. So that's what I'm using for paint Hold on here. So these paints in here, and then there's Amsterdam paints. So I just get, I, I do a collection of whatever's available. And um, I do prefer though my, my paints in the tube, you know, the Dollarama paints, I, I don't, I did at the beginning. There are a couple colors I like to use from them because they're really heavy and opaque. But for the most part now, my work is all done in a higher quality product um, like Amsterdam or uh, Liquid Tax. Sometimes it's golden, but um, mm. that's a dream. <laughs> the golden is, that would be a dream to use golden. I'd be charging three times more, I think, for my artwork. <laughs> so I tend to use those two over the Dollarama. But for me, for the everyday person who's just getting started, um, I highly recommend um, to just get a little canvas at the store and just get a couple inexpensive brushes and just play. You don't have to have any outcome and get a whole bunch of them, do five or 10. And, and then once you get feel for it, then you can go out and explore and get, you know, some better paints. Um, I always make sure I get them when they're on sale, you know. And what's really nice when you go to a place like Beatnik, which is a local place, is you get the service because when you're starting out and they know, you, you, they know what three main colors you should get because you'll walk in and you'll see all these gorgeous colors and you want them all, but they can help you to kind of guide you to the most popular colors that you can work with, your primary colors, et cetera. So um, I recommend that. I might, I might leave it like this for now. I don't know if I should do any more because, you know, we don't want to. Well, well, why don't we, we could talk a little bit while it dries a little bit and then you can, you know, maybe after 10 minutes or so, you might add a little bit more. I don't know. Sure. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so John and I have a, a five-year-old granddaughter who I'm sure she's channeling some major artist. She's, uh, she wakes up in the morning and she thinks of art. She just wants to do art all the time. And so one of her favorite sayings is, they call me Gaga. She says, Gaga, there are no mistakes in art. <laughs> I love great? it. I think it's fabulous. I think I, she would be maybe the child that I would have. Uh, I think, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. She she called me one day. She we were doing a, a FaceTime, and she said, "Do you have time to do some art? I know I I learned something new." I said, "Oh sure." So I set up FaceTime, and I'm at my art table, and she's there, and so she's demonstrating. She says, "Now this is the equipment you need." So I got it, and she said, "Now you do it this way." I said, "Well, what about doing it this way?" She said, "Just do it your own way, and I'll do it mine." <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I think that's right. And you know, isn't that wonderful? We we lost that, didn't we? As you know, as we're told, the nose and the don't do that, and all the rules. Because as a child, we're all free like that. Exactly, exactly. So you I could, love. You can work. I love you can work with her, like funny though. You could work with her. I'm sure. I think you probably could. I mean, yeah. she could probably be a partner with you. The way that this kid does art, like love it's it. it's amazing. So anyway, but but you're right. I think, and something like this, if people can just kind of relax into it it just takes away some of the inhibitions of of doing yes. art yes yes Definitely. and i think I for, I, for two two things from two perspectives one is when people are working and they're very um caught in you know routine and everything's repetitive this is a great way to do a stress reliever on the other hand we're in the middle of covid and i think that you know we've talked to, on the show about how important it is to have a hobby, to have something that you really love to do that is relaxing, but also is it, it challenges you a little bit, that's fun. And so I think that um, doing something like this, especially the way that you're suggesting people start, like start with just a couple of brushes, uh, an, even an old canvas they could use, right? They could do gesso and then they could start over. And that's then- right. The, the dollar store paints, it's a great way to start. Why not, you know? And then the other, and the dollar store paints are great, what's even better for dollar store, but they might not understand mixing, is um, I always like to support local. So for me to say Walmart, but Walmart does have three, uh, this one, but I think they might, they're hard to get right now, but they only have the red, the yellow, and the blue. They're my favorites. Yep. These are Dale Rowney. 
And I don't know if they're discontinuing them. They've been hard to find. They, they're very, there's never any on that. Um, I'll use a lot of white. So I go into this white one. So we have this white, the red, the blue, and the yellow. And I use it all the time because of many of my artwork that's all of recent, this is all I'm using, red, yellow, and blue, and I'm just learning to mix colors. So um, the general person will know, you know, if they mix red and yellow, they get orange. If they mix, you know, they might, so you can just start with red, yellow, and blue with one white, that's all you need. And then if you mix red with white, what do you get? Pink. If you mix a little bit of red with a lot of white, you get a light pink, right? So. People, I think, generally know that yellow with uh, um, the blue will give you green. So you can really start without having to put a lot of money out, just getting three better quality paints. You know, you can go to the art supply store or your bigger store like a Walmart or a Michaels, get your red, yellow, and blue, your white, and then your, your inexpensive brushes. You know, I have some inexpensive brushes here and I love them. Sometimes the inex, because I can get in there and not worry that I have a $50 brush that <laughs> I'm ruining. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. you know, so I can go in and it doesn't matter at the beginning. So that's a good, good point. Well, acrylic, you have to clean with uh, uh, turpentine or something like that? No. Not the acrylics, um, just with water. And that's a good question. So you just have your bucket of water. Um, I should, uh, maybe I'll take that, but my, yeah, I just have my yogurt container. My brushes are in here, but I have my water in here too. And um, that's it. So that's why I like the easy cleaning up with it. Now, if it gets on your clothes, it won't come off, but it will, it'll definitely um, come right, wash your hands and it comes right off, but it won't come on your clothes. I don't know if I own any clothes without being on them anymore. <laughs> well, I, I took some art lessons or, yeah, I did, and and for me it was uh, not uh, not relaxing. It was stressful because I yes. I was trying to copy something, and it, I, I I did okay. It's still not finished. It's probably fifteen years. It's still sitting down there. But it's but what I did twenty five years. Okay, but <laughs> it's it's still there. But I did okay. But it was not relaxing for me. And so you know, Chris has been into the art, and and for me, but what you just did just there, yeah, I could maybe handle that. Yes, you could. Absolutely. And that's, again, like the, the clients that I had, this is in Mexico, the snowbirds, I came down uh, when they were with uh, my husband and learning, you know, he was going through all the, the, the proper, the proper way, you know, because we would really appreciate that <laughs> um, to, you know, learn to draw, learn your values, learn all the theory and all of that. And really, they just wanted to relax sit yeah. back, not think they've thought their whole life, like really, you know, left brain or mostly left brain, the right brain now just really allowing them to, to enjoy. Sometimes they'll come into the studio and they just sit down at the easel and um, just paint for a couple of hours from a reference photo. And so, like I said, some of them are very, very good. Um, and I do have people in my own personal workshops that I know can draw circles around me and paint circles around me, but they're tight. They're really, you know, they're so afraid. So it is about just allowing your your inner your inner part, just let it be and, and see what comes on there. And that's why I don't like a reference necessarily photo to use because you can't tell if I'm good or bad in this. <laughs> you, you can't see that. Well, wait a minute, that doesn't look like anything like that. We did a, um, a portrait, uh, I call them fun and funky faces. Um, and we did one in, uh, just a couple of weeks ago and there was a woman in there and she decided to do her granddaughter. Now it was a quick, her purpose is to loosen up and to really, cause she can draw, she's beautiful. She's, she's very good. So what happened is she did this really quick sketch. She's never painted a face before. And with the process that I showed, it was amazing. It was so good, but it, it didn't really quite, it wasn't a realistic photo of her granddaughter. I mean, you could, you could see, but it wasn't the photograph hyper realist or realist. And this was only done in 30 minutes. So you wouldn't, you know, you'd have to be quite talented to pull that off. It was so good, but see, she had the reference photo to tell her it wasn't exactly like her granddaughter. So if you saw it, you would say, oh my gosh, that's a beautiful face you just painted. But 
did it really look exact? Well, no, because it's only 30 minutes. Well, it's probably less of an hour. You know, it takes hours to really perfect if you want that photorealistic, you know, face. So, um, but that happens. So that's why sometimes reference is good. I always tell people have a reference photo, but don't, it's your reference is to inspire you. Maybe it's the color. Maybe it's the shapes in there. Maybe it's the mood. Maybe, you know, but it doesn't have to be exact unless that's the route you want to go down. But at the beginning, just let it be. Um, can you also show us some of your finished artwork that people can purchase from you and do you, and speak a little bit about, um, do you do some custom uh, floral paintings like based on a client's um, interior design at their particular home? Mm -hmm. um, I can, you know, most of my artwork is out, but I, I mean, I'm going to take my phone off. My bed and... It's okay. That's okay. I'm going to see if I can, oh, I don't know if I can, fl oh, wait, let me see if I can flip this. I don't know if this will let me flip. Oh, it did it. Oh, oh, it did. Sorry. I was looking okay, at you so and I not thought that you had to put on the, uh, yeah. Okay. So, I love that painting in your um, studio there. So this one was the, the same idea as John, you know, you were saying, this was just a whole bunch of mess. And then I just reduced it down. It's reduction painting. And when I do the reduction painting, just whatever appears, then what was interesting is I had no intention to paint at all the Detroit skyline. But when I kept going and kept reducing, doesn't it kind of look like that to you? Yeah. It may or may not. But to me, it's kind of this abstracted Detroit skyline without really being so literal. Yeah. No. Um, Fantastic. Do that there. That is not like, now this is very abstracted for me. Don't see this is, my studio is a mess right now because I set up for this. So I just have them in these frames. Um, then this is, well, that's nice. Got I think nice you color. showed that photo there, same concept. And if I go in really close, you'll see like this, um, could hmm. I finish it more possibly, but there's something about it, this roughness of it, the mm -hmm. line work in here being really just, I, I've kind of gravitated to. Um, How did you do the line work, Sweaty Lou? With this, I use two things in that I've used um, a black Sharpie and yep. I've used a white Posca pen. Oh. Posca pen for that. These ones here, this is a good example. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, that's nice. So if I go up really close for your viewers, you can see there's really not necessarily a specific floral in there. Like I haven't drawn that out. But when I bring it back, and again, this one here. So the first one you said you're reducing. What do you mean by reducing? Re uh, re yeah, reduction um, or negative space painting. Um, I would definitely, it's kind of what I, that's how I do most of my artwork. So if I do that close, you can see like that's not really floral. But when I pull it back, right? Um, so what I mean by that, I'm just gonna bring this back up here. Oh, here, this is my quick studio space, folks. Um, it's a real mess, because I literally just moved everything to the side. You can see this is a, this is the table. Look at how messy my table is. <laughs> <laughs> it shows all your cool stuff that you have to create your art. Right, well, I have a wonderful space to get messy. So as I was chit-chatting, I was, Really, really messy there. Um, so to answer that question, John, oops, am I there? Yeah, there we go. I, I just, I just gonna put, I put it back so we're all on. Oh, so, so we get. Oh, you reverse your oh, camera, Oh, yeah, get it. Yeah, I have to flip it back. What did I just do? There it is. See if I can flip that. No. And then while you're setting up your camera, I'm just gonna mention where you're located. You're located uh, in Show Studios at six twenty eight, uh, Mammoth Road on the corner of Walker and Wyandotte. Um, uh -huh. It's a creative hub where you'll find artists. We have the fiber artists that we actually had the fiber artists on, which was Deb Dunlop. We've got, there's theater in there. Uh, many, many uh, various forms uh, of art. And, and of course, Soiree is located in there as well <laughs> on the second floor. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's really cool what you do and it's interesting. And I know, like I said, when I took art lessons with, I took two of your workshops and I never thought I would try to paint because I just thought, I just don't have it in me. Again, you did do a lot of it to make it look really great after, but it was fun and it was so relaxing. And that. So those are your <laughs> husband's paintings. 
Those were my husbands. That's my fun and funky face. Um, and the only reason why I'm doing this for you right now is because um, I can't, when she switched over, I don't know how to switch my camera to flip back around to me, which is fine. Um, this is my, my husband's uh, landscapes. These are Essex County landscapes. Nice. And then your so, husband, just as we're speaking of artists, your husband was actually um, in a really big art show, wasn't he? And um, had competed in a really big, I, I remember a couple of years back, we were talking about that. He had some beautiful, his artwork is equally beautiful. It's beautiful as well. Obviously a different style than what you're doing. Yeah, def definitely a different style. Here we go. I found it. I think. Yeah. There okay. you are. <laughs> I was like, oh, where is it? Okay. okay, there we go. Oh, look at that. Now I can see that on a bigger. You know what? The whole time I've been talking and speaking to you, I've been in this little corner, so I have no idea what you can oh. see. <laughs> I was just going with it. Now I can see. Oh, this is good. Oh, yeah. So we just need to fix up some of the colors here. No problem. Um, uh, yeah, so he uh, he's in a couple of art galleries in Mexico, and he does more of the a very contemporary modern woman face, a Mexican face. So it's really, they're really, really cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's him, and uh, he's he's quite amazing, and uh, he'll he knows to tell me just to do one thing. This is this is that good therapy for John. He just tells me one thing per year to focus on. For my art, he knows not to tell me what to do. <laughs> I like that. That's good. One thing, one thing a do. year. <laughs> one thing a year. <laughs> so he just, he's very, very, I didn't realize it was that close. Um, sorry, that's good. That works. Um, he, he, uh, he will uh, tell me literally like the first two years, all I worked uh, for my artist letter, watching my values. Still having a hard time with that. But he, as he said, you'll know it in theory, but to actually put it into place is a different story. So that's pretty mm -hmm. much all I work on right now is one thing. And just, I don't worry about um, composition and all the rules, repetition. I mean, I, some of it's in there, but I just play. I just, just play folks, just play. It's all in us well, already. Your work is really inspiring. And I often have said to you, is that I would go down to your when I needed inspiration. I was working on an event and I didn't need an inspiration. This is the truth. I'll go down to, you know, you kind of get stuck. I go down to Florida Little Studio and I'll just I like just stay in the middle and just kind of look around to be re-inspired or uplifted in that. And it always works because you've always got great color in there and just beautiful pieces. And they are they're and your title uh Flo Joy Studios, it is very joyful in there. Oil pastel. Cool. Just a little, again, I'm just doing some little marks and um, oil that's pastel a, came that's around. A pretty, that's a pretty big painting, Floyd. Uh, so where where would you hang that? Like our, our I think one of our problems is going to be, we, our house isn't big enough to hang all the paintings that Chris is doing. <laughs> right. Well, um, you'll have to buy a bigger house or buy a second house. How's that sound? Uh, that, that's about, it sounds <laughs> about right. <laughs> Mexico. Uh, yeah. that's, why, that's what I did. <laughs> I had to just buy a house in Mexico. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's they make good. great gifts too, right? So you do. they have the passion. You do. So, so what, what what did you do before uh, five years ago before you started painting? Oh, beautiful. There you go. So I have them all the little ones for those people who don't have uh, space in their walls but want to have a little joy next to their bed stand. Um, or maybe they want to gift somebody flowers that last forever. They're in hospital or oh, nice. that slowly. All right, so these are just nicely done here. Oh, oh, see, this is one of my faces. Oh, cool. We'll hide that. <laughs> um, so uh, what did I do before that? I, um, for the last... 20-ish years prior to going to Mexico, um, I worked two careers. I worked as a, a waitress and bartender, and I also worked in sales and marketing uh, and represented a skincare and cosmetic company. Um, and I jumped back into that as well because I like to play with color. So even this next to your bed stand, Beautiful. you know, something like this. So we do have smaller pieces. And um, it's the same process. You do the same process. Same process, the negative space, Oops. which is what um, John mentioned. All that means is I basically have negative spaced or reduced 
So all that color, I've taken it out. Okay, yep. gotcha. gotcha. And, then, and, and I've let whatever that messiness be come the uh, subject. Hmm. So that's kind of what that is. And that's my process all the way around because but I like- You, how you saw that vase of flowers in there before you started though, right? Um, Kind of, yeah, I'll see shapes. I, I know that I'm gonna do the vase with flowers um, because I love to do them. Flowers are just fun and joyful. Um, I have done landscapes recently um, the same way. Um, but what will happen is I'll come into a block of color like in here and I'll be like, oh, this looks like it could be the center. I don't think you'll, you might be able to see that. I'm like, oh, that looks like the center and this could be little, and I'll just look and I'll see what might represent what could be a flower. Like this oh, okay. is a block so go of back, color. Go back to that original before you started reducing it. What else could it, could it have been or what else could you have done with it? Um, I could have done, hold on, here's one that we did. Again, this is a quick demo. Let me see if I can fine. So here's a winter scape. I normally don't do landscapes. Hold on here. I'm going to take this down so it doesn't fight against that. Um, this is a landscape. More of a winter scape. Yeah. Now, I, I did use uh, my husband's uh, painting as a reference. It doesn't look anything like his painting, in, you know, but I, I used his composition and his concept um, to do that. So it could become that. I did this uh, on Monday night's workshop. We did a treescape. Oh, that's cool. Now, um, I didn't have much time. Like, I, when I'm demoing, you know, I'm helping. There we go. When I'm demoing, I don't have time, so I have to really work quickly. But if I bring this in close, if you look at the tree trunks, which is this, it might be hard. See how there's just a whole yeah. bunch of different colors? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So all I've done is I negative spaced it. In this case, that was my negative spacing, the darker blue, and then I added just swatches of, of uh, uh, black in there and that's because I had too too many even spaces um you know it was just I saw the mistakes but and then my pathway the same thing and then I just add extra colors over top to kind of guide it so so what would the the canvas have looked like before you did that before I did all of this the canvas would have looked very similar to let me see if I have oh here maybe um Hold on. It would look just like the other one where I have somebody's in here. Sometimes I always have some extra hanging around. Well, my workshop people, I'm looking for workshop people. Here we go. Um, so when we do our workshops, I have them create a few of these so we're ready to go. So here's one. Okay. Um, right. So same idea. She, I don't think she's done this. This is somebody. Oops. Sorry. Yeah, oh, this is a similar, right? So somebody's done this. This is their messy paper, another one. And we're going to create that into um, a landscape. Sorry. So you just have them do messy work and then, and then, and then start that's, over. That's it. That's step one. And um, sorry, I can't find it. But anyway, yeah, step one is we have the music playing. You've got paint and I just tell you to Whatever your paintbrush tells you to do, you do it. There's no, um, I don't want you to think flowers. I don't want you to think birds. I just, or if you, if you want to think flowers and birds, just listen to music, take the paint, put it down on the thing. We let it dry. Then we decide what the subject matter will be, whether it's a landscape or floral. I always tend to work when people are first starting is with floral because floral um, is just very, for me, I, I love it and it's simple and it's joyous. Um, and landscapes too, um, people can get a really good result. They can get a really great result from it. So how long are your workshops? Um, they, uh, they, they vary, I, I did a three month series starting in September, October and November. And it's every Monday nights from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. but we don't leave till nine. I tell them eight because I know they're going to go into nine o'clock. So two to three hours. 
uh, because then they kind of wrap it up. So we do about two to three hours every Monday night at 6 p.m. Starting in November, I will um, open up two spots and that will be available. Um, but that's a tough one right now because you're stepping into people who've already been painting and understand the method and process and are midway through. New people, two spots can open up and join in, but I, it really will be specific to um, what they're looking for and how I can marry the two together with the people who have already previously been coming. Mm -hmm. And, and it's wonderful. Pieces. It's sure. wonderful because we have a huge space. We're in the show studio theater and the old show studio. So it's huge. So social distancing is really easy to do. I only, I, I only allow four people in this space. You, it, it, I think legally we could have 12 in there, but I only do four because I can give really good personal attention and um, do all of that. So. so when are you back from Mexico? I will leave December and then I'll probably be back sometime around May. Usually I'm gone from uh, this time. I'm usually gone by now. I'm just moving this back so, so far. Um, I usually leave September, October and I come back April or May. Um, this year I'm just here a little bit longer to do these workshops and uh, that's it. And then I will do uh, start when I come back in May, I'll start up again. And then the studio here, that's why I like show is that it allows me to, um, I cannot be here and I can keep it up more like a gallery space that people can come through and take a look. If they're looking for art for their home. Um, they can walk through the studio doors are always open um, here. And there's other artists here too. So I, I can leave my place while I'm gone and so many of the other artists here are so collaborative that like Rosemary, she'll help me out and say, oh, I have a client, I'm gonna walk them through your studio. So really nice things like that. It's a really great collaboration here. So, so if the four of us wanted to do a workshop, we're gonna have to wait till May. Yes, you might have to do that. Um, unless I set up a, ve a very specific day for you, we can do that. Like I, it would, my Monday nights, it's just getting the space um, because my studio is too small. Right. And they don't have theater space. But I might be able to do Monday. If anybody's interested in a workshop for four people on a Monday, I can do because I booked the theater room for the whole day. And that would be available from at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. on a Monday. Okay, group. We need to talk. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yes, um, I saw that, uh, Rosemary. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so um now we're going to um Floydie Lou is going to do uh, has is going to provide has provided today's giveaway which we do every um every show um the giveaway is always sponsored by uh one of our guests is a guest speaker and she's going to do a uh, small painting giveaway and then Cynthia will do our spinning wheel and we'll see who the lucky winner is to his beautiful art piece and so I'm thinking while she's spinning, we can let them have a choice, but maybe something like this, or this oh, has a bit oh, of a festive. Oh, Cheryl Bondi. Oh, wonderful. Who? Cheryl Bondi. Cheryl Bondi. Cheryl so Bondi. you'll be able to pick from a couple. I'll let you choose which let's, one. Okay, hold on. I'm going to just be, so we can give you a close up there from there. Okay. Or there, and I've got a couple of others. Oh. These are just ones I have, so I'll let you choose. Okay, they're both really nice. Beautiful. So With Cheryl, Christmas coming, it's kind of Christmassy. So, so Cheryl yeah. lives in Ottawa, but does come home regularly for because she has family here. So we'll make sure we get that to her. Okay, sounds great. Um, we do have a vast audience, which I guess is great. We're, we're viewed from all over. So um, the last few minutes, did we have any audience questions or comments for uh, for Floydie Lou? I don't know if we had, uh, if we could just check on that. Um, so if uh, Cynthia has posted into the comment section how you can get a hold of Floydie Lou uh, for um, classes or if you wish to purchase her artwork, you know, please, uh, great to come and see it while she's still in the city before she goes back because she can uh, help you make those selections for your home and that and then uh wanted to just touch on our up uh did we have sorry did we have any comments or questions or we're okay just because of the the um i think in the start there 
our cameras were, were showing different areas. So while, this, while we were talking, what you were doing with your negative space there, um, the, the viewers were just wondering what you had done because we saw the painting and then if you can just walk us through that negative space um, that, that you did to bring in the vase and the flowers. So like the painting of the white, right? This here, what I did? Is that the question? I'm not sure I understand the question. Yeah, so uh, in the start there, we started out with, it was the same canvas where all of that, that gorgeous, now that is flowers, that was all over the canvas. You can just kind of explain the process before you started with the box. Before I started with that. Well, um, I didn't chalk it out. Um, I don't have chalk handy. So let me just use a brush to point out. So basically when I looked at it, I was kind of saying, okay, well, where would I want my vase to be? Do I want it dead center? Do I want it off to the side? But more importantly for me, what happened is it's my way of seeing it. There was a couple of marks on here that kind of created this shape. And it wasn't intentional at the beginning when I made, I could, I could just kind of see it. Um, so I decided to go with with that and I just kind of marked it out as far as, okay, that's where my vase is going to be. And then um, from there, I just kind of made my kind of line work across here. And it's even uneven, I mean, which I'm okay with, um, which was this, okay, this is gonna be my table. And then this is gonna be my, like all in here is going to be my wall. So I just basically made my table and then just put in a color, any color, choose the color. And I just put a, a color in here for now. And I've got a lot of uh, background color coming through. So make sure I don't hit my ceiling fan there. Hold on. Wait, wait let me do it this way. So you can see all those colors that were um, first there. They're, they're peeking through. So it's not a solid white color. And then um, in this area here, I took, I'm just looking for a dry brush. Um, here we go. Oops. I got lots of paint out. I'm going to have to paint painting. Um, <laughs> uh, I just took a brush and basically I go in this way and I carve out and I'm just seeing shapes and colors of where I want to do and I'm just carving it out to um, get me an idea of the vase. Now, for my artists who might be watching, if I did my grid, I really could think a little bit more specifically as to where is my focal point, right? Am I in the right area for a good focal point? And having one of those flowers really be dominant. I didn't think about that. I didn't worry about it. I'm just painting. Again, I'm not worrying about all those rules at the beginning. I'm just playing with those colors. So once I cut that in to areas, and I even did it back in here, you know, I just kind of went over top into these little whitish areas to make it look like the wall was coming through. And then for the actual floral to make it, some of it look like a floral, I basically just did a swipe, a swipe and a swipe, and then a swipe, a swipe and a swipe. And I just kind of, I didn't go in a lollipop. I just kind of did these straight lines, boom. Boom, boom, almost like a, a U. You could do a U, you could do like a curve, but I almost do it a little straighter. But that's how, that's the whole process, I mean, in a nutshell. You have to practice and do them over and over. But that's what that negative space is. They just took another color over top, but I've left, I've left those other colors underneath. You've seen, you can even, I have it sideways because I have a ceiling fan above me, so I don't want to hit it. But there's some scratch marks in here. And that's because I went like this on the back end to make my scratch marks. Does that answer for you? That's excellent. Thank that's you. excellent. So, and again, we apologize for the, the beginning. Uh, unfortunately, on my screen, I could see everything. I wasn't aware that you couldn't see it. So it's hard sometimes when you're trying to figure things out from, uh, from, from our end here. But so hopefully that answered the question. And that, Florida, we just want to thank you for coming on to the show. This was so wonderful. Uh, it, it, I know this is very uplifting. I said, like I said, your 
artwork is beautiful. It's very joyful. And if you want to get a hold of Floyd Lou, please just check out the, the links that Cynthia has posted. Wanted to say um, thank you. Uh, I think we had Alexandra's music today. Was it Alexandra's? Yeah, so Alexandra's on check for your beautiful music that you provide for us for our opening segue and our closing. Uh, Alex, Alexander is on check, does have a new album out after 10 years, it's beautiful, so check it out, it's, um, oh my god, I'm just going blank, but anyways, we, um, the name of it, I just went blank, I apologize, but if you look at, uh, just go under his, what, under Alexander's on check, and you'll find it, um, it's got some cool videos with it, so I want to thank all of our, uh, our viewers for coming on, either watching us live, or if you're catching us on replay, we appreciate you coming on, Thank you to uh, my wonderful hosts for always making a fabulous show. <laughs> and um, next week, we have back Tish Harkis from the Canadian Club. Um, she will uh, be sharing with us. It's Whiskey Month in November. So we will be on Wednesday afternoon will be our watch party, our one, one of our more uh, watch shows and popular shows. And it will be hosted by one of the hosts, but then Thursday evening will be our live. So Thursday, November, uh, November the 5th at 8 p.m. with Tish Harkis. She's going to, it's Whiskey Month. And uh, when I was speaking with Tish, I said, what's Whiskey Month mean? And she said, well, that's when we transition from our summer beverages into our winter beverages and our holiday beverages. So good time to start to practice those uh, different cocktails for the holidays. So we look forward to for you to join us in the evening. We will then do a replay, of course, of the evening show during the day. The following week, November the 11th, we will be, uh, our show will be our live on the regular Wednesday at 1 p.m. And that will be to honor and to uh, all our veterans and for Remembrance Day. So the show will be all about re uh, Remembrance Day. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. And we will see you back next week. Take care and have an awesome day. Enjoy this beautiful sunshine that we got. Thanks, Lady Lou. Thanks, Lady Lou. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.